Hi, my name is Sarah Hines and I'm an artist in residence here at UF Health Shands Hospital. Today, I'd like to share a lesson with you that is inspired by artist Jen Arani. She's a graphic illustrator and an amazing watercolor artist. Here's what you'll need to get started. You'll need some watercolor paper or paper that can take getting wet without getting too soggy, some watercolors, a fine tip Sharpie or other water fast pen, and a little tiny bit of white acrylic paint. If you don't have watercolors, you can also use washable markers for this project. Stay tuned and let's get started. I'm going to create two watercolor landscapes. I want to make them circular, so I'm going to start out by tracing around something round. On one watercolor landscape, I'm going to fill the circle completely, but on the other, I want to add in a mountain range first. So with my pencil, I'm just going to lightly create an irregular mountain range. Now I need to choose my colors. I've got my color wheel out here. Remembering that colors that are next to each other on the color wheel blend beautifully. I'll start this one out with purple. And I'm going to go right next to that pencil line. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Now I'm going to work my way around the color wheel, fading to blue. Oops. I'll fill in a section of blue first, work the edges. and then let the blue and the purple blend. I can even come back in with a little more purple to blend the colors extra. Next, I'll add a bit of green. Just a touch of blue to help that blend together. And lastly, right near those mountain lines, I'll add some yellow. Hugging the pencil lines towards the bottom. You can choose any colors you want. Just remembering that colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel tend to make a brown. So if I combine orange and blue or yellow and purple, I might get a brown color when I blended them. All right, let's try a little something different for the other one. I'm going to pull purple into the bottom. I like to do my hard work first. For me, going around the edges first feels like getting the hard work out of the way. It doesn't really matter what kind of brush you use, but you want a brush where you feel like you can cut into those edges. With watercolor, if you want dark, rich color, you use more paint. And if you want light color, you use more water.
I'll add just a little bit more purple to really get those colors to blend nicely. Because this background is nice and wet, you can even roll the paper back and forth to get the color to move. I'm gonna let these dry for a minute and I'll be right back to add the details. My paint's nice and dry now and I can come in with a fine tip Sharpie or other black pen of your choice and add in some designs. On this one, I'm going to add some pine trees. I'll start out by creating the trunks of the trees in varying lengths. And then with lines that start smaller and grow bigger, work down each trunk. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical and they don't have to all be the same. These can represent any evergreen trees. I try to vary the direction of my line a little bit so it's not all exactly the same. Thinking of the twists and turns of branches on trees in nature. On the other piece, I'm going to add in some mountains. There's that. So first I'll trace over my pencil line. And then I'll create a line coming down from each mountain top. And another one from the mountain bottom that meets up with it. These can be quite irregular. Now, on the side where you've created these triangles, we can use a technique called hatching to add shading. Hatching just means lines that are laid right next to each other. And this is gonna create the shadows on our mountains. We can add some more lines coming down for texture and also some stippling or dots just placed here and there. If you'd like, you can outline the bottom of your circle to finish off the ink part of your drawing. Went a little outside the lines there, but that's okay. To finish these off, we're gonna add some stars in our sky. I have some white acrylic paint, but you can also use whiteout or a correction pen. To make my stars nice and small, I'm not even gonna use a paintbrush. 
I'm actually just going to use the point of a pencil and dip in the paint and add stars into my sky. You can create constellations or you can create stars running in a pattern like the Milky Way. The more paint you have on the tip of your pencil, the larger your star will be. If you want to try to create stars that are a little larger, you can use the back of a paintbrush or the tip of a dull pencil. And there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. Here's a bonus. If you don't have paint and you'd still like to try this activity, you can do it with washable markers. I'm just coloring in the area that I would normally paint solidly and completely with some children's markers. And then when I'm done, I'm going to dab water right on top to let the colors blend. I like to start with the lightest color first and I'm not scrubbing too much. I'm just dabbing water on the surface. Once the water has started to absorb the dye from the markers, the colors blend. Thanks again for tuning in. I can't wait to see what you create.